Hi, thank you for joining us for yet another session of our Ask Me Anything webinars. Uh, we put those webinars out monthly. Uh, each month we have a different topic on a different kind of technology, uh, but the, the general theme is modern technologies that make up modern data platforms, data lakes, data warehouses. We just keep the buzzwords and, and show you uh, real stuff that we do and talk about new modern technologies and methods. Uh, today, the topic is going to be combining Presto and Elasticsearch uh, to do things that we weren't able to do before. Um, Presto and Elasticsearch are completely different technologies. Uh, one is used for uh, call data uh, store, call data querying, call data, and, and data federation. And one is a very hot kind of data layer um, for text search and, and real time aggregations and BI and those kind of things. But combining them together can get you a real value and can get you the ability to do things that you uh, weren't able to do before. And that is our topic today. And I'll be expanding on that in just a second. Um, a couple of words about us. Uh, we are Big Data Boutique. What we do is model, architect, build, and optimize uh, data platforms. Whether you do, you have big data or, or you don't. Uh, again, the definition of what big data is uh, is vague. But with, whether you do have big data or not, you probably have some data challenges, and uh, we are here to help. So what we do, we uh, find a way to uh, advise you on what would be the right architecture for your data platform, whether you are deployed on a public cloud, Azure, Google Cloud, uh, AWS, and others, or you are on-prem in your own data center, even air gapped environment, and we find a way to uh, architect that, and we can support you with all of the uh, modern standard and even bleeding, bleeding edge technologies that make up a modern data platform. So Kafka, Spark, Presto, Elasticsearch, we are worldwide, world renowned experts on those. And uh, we do Pulsar, Fling, and many other technologies in that space. With Elasticsearch, we are very confident in our abilities and we have proven over the years uh, our expertise. Uh, we are Elastic certified engineers. We provide hands-on consulting, development services, production support even 24-7 uh, with up to one hour SLA. Uh, we can uh, review a cluster, find wh where to put uh, performance and cost optimizations into practice. Uh, we even do some training and we are trusted by uh, really large entities worldwide and we have many, many customers in different scales uh, all around the world. So for the agenda for today would be to talk a bit about what Presto is and how people usually use Elasticsearch and how those two technologies can complement each other. So we'll talk about Presto, um, what it is, why it came to be. We'll talk a bit about the connectors Presto connectors, and then introduce the Elasticsearch connector and the things that you, we can do with it, and then showcase a couple of um, challenges or features that that connector can uh, now support and, and allow you to do that you haven't been able to do before, and also show you some real-world use cases for the things that we can do with it and, and even do for uh, for our customers. Now, this webinar is in the Ask Me Anything format. So this um, this session is just to give you some context and information and some sort of an icebreaker. And then uh, during, the, during the session and even after, you just use the YouTube chat um, where this uh, session is broadcasted and just type it in, we'll see that and we'll respond uh, I'll answer those questions immediately uh, once I'm done with the session itself. So before we start, um, I'm assuming all of you here actually know what Elasticsearch is. It's uh, widely known um, and it's been used for many years now. And there's also been a bit of a turmoil uh, the last couple of weeks around Elasticsearch licensing, so it became even uh, more, let's say, popular or, or known. 
Uh, usually people use, use Elasticsearch as a read facade for the data. So it's a, some sort of a search server that allows you to get uh, full text search on scale um, for your data, documents, and, and any full text search. Many people use it for, for logs, centralized logging, um, and uh, metrics to do uh, real-time BI and analytics and figure out what's going on in their systems. Um, many, many people use Elasticsearch for that, but many people also use Elasticsearch as a search server. So the ability to search and, and, and do aggregations on data, whether it's full text search or again, metrics, uh, or even geospatial data. And Elasticsearch is really, really good at that. Um, and uh, the main focus of Elasticsearch is providing you low latency query layer on top of, of your data. Uh, and so, and therefore it is a very hot kind of uh, technology. Uh, Presto on the other hand was created in Facebook around 2012. Um, by the by, three four founders, um, Martin, Dane, and Dan David, um, and Facebook, as you can imagine, have has a very vast amount of data. So uh, it's persisted on HDFS clusters. Um, and it's data warehouse, or sort of um, tabular data, with vast amounts of data, and many analysts actually wanting to query on that and derive insights out of that. So Facebook were, were using the traditional, back then, traditional ways of doing that. So HDFS and, and Hive to uh, get SQL queries to run on that data, data warehouse. But um, for those of you who know those technologies, they, you know that those, those, the ability to run SQL queries on large amounts of data um, if it's really on large amounts of data, it's going to take a while to run. So Martin, Dan, and David set to actually find a better way to do that, and that is how Presto was born. So the, the entire idea of Presto is really to be um, better at executing those queries on big data and return as fast as possible and also support uh, scaling this linearly. So basically, if a query on Hive would just run um, a couple of hours or overnight, then with Presto, you can just scale out to more nodes and get it done much, much faster and uh, uh, leverage a lot of things like dynamic filtering and, and push downs in order to get those queries even more efficient and uh, uh, requiring even less CPU. So that was the main main thing that uh, Presto was about solving. But uh, eventually, this ability of having a predictive cost and, and scaling out effectively and ad, uh, knowing what how many resources are required and, and only uh, putting them uh, in your uh, query engine when you need them and not just having their, their line around all the time. So the separation of compute and storage that is basically one of the key design uh, features of, of Presto and one of the things that makes it so successful and so widely known uh, today. Another thing that while doing that, um, those guys actually um, started doing and it turned out to be a, another interesting feature uh, and, and well-requested feature of, of Presto is the what we call query federation. How can we connect many data sources and allow us and, and basically allow us to join between di completely different data sources um, in a single query using that single uh, query engine. We often call this MPP, Massively Parallel uh, Processor. So query federation is one of the features that uh, was built into Presto and nowadays it's also very widely used. So you can basically avoid a lot of ETLs, ETL processes. So instead of copying data around between 
um, your OLTP MySQL or reporting MySQL to your data warehouse just so you can join with the dimension tables. Like, for example, you would do with BigQuery and Snowflake if your data warehouse is there. With Presto, you can actually execute a single SQL query and Presto will reach out to your MySQL and to your S3 storage and even Kafka and Cassandra and what have you. And that query federation feature, also known as a data virtualization layer, is what makes Presto so attractive for many use cases. So fast forward eight, nine years, we now have many large players like Comcast and Twitter and Slack, Walmart, and many more actually using Presto to run their data warehouse and, and data lakes. Recently, um, Presto has been forked from uh, the Facebook uh, fork, the main original fork uh, um, repository. It was called PrestoDB over there. And it was, it was forked to be called Presto SQL. And race recently, it was renamed Trino. So I'm going to use Presto. Trino is, 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 is a word or is a name. Trino is what we, uh, is a distribution of Presto and of efficiently, essentially this is the uh, distribution of Presto that is maintained by the original authors uh, today. And it's obviously also open source. So how does Pre Presto work? Uh, Presto has essentially two, uh, two important APIs. The first API is the API that you are going to approach Presto with a query. And that is going to be ANSI SQL, just standard SQL. Uh, so Presto can be effectively be used as a drop-in replacement for pretty much any uh, query engine or an IDE that you use. And the other side is the connectors, which is where Presto gets its data from. So uh, traditionally, that would be Hadoop and S3. So Presto was built in order to be able to allow you to query data warehouses that are stored on Hadoop and S3. So very cold storages, making it very cost efficient. But that was built in a very abstract way. And the way that person does it is using what's called an e-connector. And there is a specific SPI, a specific plugin uh, interface that allows uh, you and, and many others to build more connectors, to connect with many more data sources. And that is where um, other data sources were built into that. So for example, as you would imagine, we can also use Presto to query traditional SQL databases and database clusters like Oracle, MySQL, SQL Server, uh, Teradata, and, and all of those. Um, but the really important or really interesting part is where Presto can actually be used to query things that are not SQL by nature. So there are not data warehouses. There are not um, just SQL databases. They are key value storage uh, storages or document databases or uh, many other kind of types of technologies like Redis and, uh, and Cassandra and many, many more. And even things that are not even related to those storages like Kafka, which is not tabular at all, but still, if uh, the, a connector was built in order for you to allow uh, simple and, and very nice looking queries on top of Kafka, and uh, you can treat every message in Kafka like a row in a table in that respect. So you can now uh, execute SQL queries to query messages in Kafka. There, there will not be any indexing involved, obviously, but still you can now do that. And there is many more other connectors, but the main idea is that Presto can basically reach out to any data source you would like. There is even connectors for Google Sheets and, and many more. So basically, the sky is the limit here. Um, you, as a consumer of, of Presto, as, as a user of Presto, you would submit ANSI SQL queries through the JDBC or ODBC drivers that Presto exposes. So JDBC is open for all, ODBC is part of the enterprise offering, but then you can plug in things like Redash and Superset, which are very widely used now, a, a dashboard and, and, and query uh, IDs, web-based query IDs. Um, more enterprise kind of software like Tableau and Power BI. 
Jupyter notebooks, that is something that many data scientists would work, would use. And of course, any, um, I, any traditional SQL IDE like uh, MySQL Workbench and DataGrip and DBeaver and, and many more. So there is really no limit and, and Presto can really be a drop-in replacement for pretty much any query engine that you're currently using. And this federation feature that Presto uh, uh, brings to the table allows you to execute SQL qu uh, queries on top of pretty much any data, data source nowadays, including Elasticsearch, which is uh, where, I'm, where I'm going with this, but also do really interesting things like join data between S3, MySQL, and Kafka, for example. And that is where things are starting to get really interesting. So like I said, Presto is, is a community-driven project. It was built by Facebook, open-sourced, and now it's maintained completely in the open uh, under the Trino repository. Uh, so it's github uh, trinodb slash Trino. Uh, it is a, a query engine supporting ANSI SQL, so standard SQL um, with a clear separation between compute and storage. So if you need to store more data, it doesn't mean that you need more Presto uh, nodes. If you want to support more parallelism and, and, and larger scale size or larger course size, then you can just add those computes when you need them and you don't need to just maintain them uh, live all the time. And again, th those are one, uh, one, one of the f killer features uh, of Presto. So like I said, there is complete JDBC and ODBC connectivity, so you can connect to pretty, from pretty much anywhere and also push down those queries to pretty much anything. And this is just a brief architecture spec, so just so you can understand how it looks like. There is a coordinator which will accept your queries. It will, it will need some access to the data sources to pull some statistics and do some query planning and optimizations. But the vast majority of the nodes that you're going to run are actually going to be workers, and those are the ones that are going to pull the data and do computations on top of that. And again, this leads us to the uh, uh, place that Presto now uh, takes in in the in the ecosystem of, of the big data and data platform space um, as what we call a data consumption layer or data virtualization layer. There is a single place where all your people from in your company, regardless of their role, can just submit queries and that layer of, uh, of JDBC or ODBC connectivity can just push down those queries to the underlying data sources and even again, join them and of course, take care of security. And, and that, that what Presto really is about. Let's talk a bit about Presto and Elasticsearch then. Uh, I didn't mention the Elasticsearch connector and there is actually one uh, built into the open source version. It supports a lot, but it doesn't support everything. Uh, what we've done here in Big Data Boutique is actually take that open source connector to Elasticsearch that it does allow to, allow to do some stuff and we enhanced it and made a lot of optimizations into it. Um, what I'm going to show you now, I'm actually going to show you some demos and those demos are actually going to be based on our version of the connector, which is again, faster and has more features. But overall, uh, a lot of the things that I'm going to show you will actually be also supported uh, by, by the open source connector. So the connector in the Presto Elasticsearch connector is essentially a translation layer between how Presto sees data, which is tables and columns and rows, schemas and databases. This is the language of SQL and that is what Presto do, does. And Elasticsearch sees the world in a different way, right? There's clusters of Elasticsearch and then there is indexes and index patterns sometimes. So a single index can be represented by many underlying indexes, what we call an aliasing or in recent Elasticsearch versions, it's called data streams and rollover API and those kind of things. And essentially when you search in Elasticsearch, you search for documents. So what we, uh, documents, and each document is a JSON document and it has uh, uh, properties and fields and so on. What the connector does, it translates the language from how Elasticsearch sees the world into the language that presses the world and vice versa. 
And it does a lot uh, in order to push down as much as possible to Elasticsearch. So whenever you ask Presto to filter out some, uh, some documents based on some predicate, or you ask for only a certain uh, some columns and so on and so forth, Pre the Presto connector, the, the way to make a good Presto connector would be to um, translate that as much as possible and push it down to Elasticsearch as much as possible so we can leverage Elasticsearch's uh, capabilities around that. So the very first thing that this allows you to do is just allow any kind of BI uh, utility that you use, like Power BI and Tableau and all of those, to just access um, Elasticsearch using the JDBC or ODBC con uh, connection. So this is actually, actually this exists in the Elasticsearch uh, layer, but it does require a license from Elasticsearch. Um, within using Presto and, and the Elasticsearch connector, you can just use SQL on Elasticsearch without caring about license, uh, doing this in a distributed manner, and again, also allow joining uh, different uh, di di from different data sources. And that ju just to show you how, how it would look like and, and how this translation layer uh, looks like, I want to first, I want to show you uh, how it looks like uh, in action. So this is data grip. I, in presentation mode, so you can see my screen well. And it connect, it's connected to a local Presto that runs locally, and I also have a local Elasticsearch and Kibana instances running. So asking Presto to show me which catalogs are available, catalogs is essentially what databases uh, it's connected to, we can see there is a, a system, JMX, TPCDS, and TPCH, which are the built-in, uh, some built-in data catalogs. Those two are just uh, data generated in memory. This gives you access to system metrics, and this gives you some access to performance metrics. And then we have two more catalogs. One is Elasticsearch. Again, it's connected to the local Elasticsearch running uh, on, on my uh, local computer and um, a memory connector which will allow me to just put data uh, table data tables in memory and, and we'll use that uh, in a minute. So again, the language that Presto speaks is catalogs, schemas, and tables, and therefore uh, I can just do something like show tables, let's do show schemas in, uh, in Elasticsearch, and you will see all the schemas that are available. And by default, we only have one, one meaningful one, which is default. So I can do show tables in Elasticsearch.default, and I'll see all the tables that are within the Elasticsearch. Now, you would know those uh, kind of indexes. Those are the system indexes that Elasticsearch maintains. And then I also created a sample data sources that you you probably know are available. So so for example, this is the local Kibana that is running, and I, what I can do, I can run this over here, get cut indices, and I can see all of those indexes, and that is exactly what is uh, actually being shown in uh, in in Presto as well. Now, as you would expect, we can pretty much do everything in the standard SQL that we can do. So for example, we can do select star from Kibana sample data, uh, let's say even logs. And once I run this, I'll just get back all the data. Now, if I was running this query in Elasticsearch, I would get a list of JSONs, so the hits and I'll get top 10. What you can see here is that um, this connector and the Presto allows you to get this data as if it was just SQL. So it will just scan, it will be a, a simple table scan, just pull all of the rows and pull more if necessary. 
it will represent everything in a tabular format. So this, uh, this is a string field agent, this is bytes, client IP, and some will be uh, sub documents. For example, an event is actually, as you can see, a row uh, that has some uh, one uh, additional field in it. And there is even more fields like uh, the geo field that are more complex or the machine OS RAM and obviously I can just query machine.os and machine.ram and there is also um, support for arrays and, and Presto indeed has uh, everything that you would need to query those um, kind of map data types and tags uh, which is in this case arrays. So we can do all of that and again this is just JSON flattened out as a table. Um, so selecting, just doing a simple select, and of course I could do anything you would expect, like for example, um, do instead of just select star, I can just select count star and get the total number of documents that is in this index. I can also do aggregations, so client IP, um, group by client IP, going to run this I'm going to get the list of all client IPs and their counts of course I can order an order by close and, and everything you would expect now there is a really interesting thing to note here um, if I would do something like uh, this or select uh, count distinct client IP from Kibana sample data logs and I would get a number here. So the, the two aggregations that I've done here are actually going to give me exact aggregations. And the reason for that is because Presto is going to actually, by design, pull all the data from uh, Elasticsearch and do the computation on the Presto side. It can push down some uh, aggregations to Elasticsearch, but in this case it won't. And there is there, this is a, a very interesting um, uh, differentiation that we need to make. With Elasticsearch, a query that does select count distinct by definition is going to do an approximation, right? This is the hyperloglog -log, um, uh, algorithm that's going to be run and uh, by definition those numbers are not going to be accurate or not guaranteed to be accurate. Same thing goes to select count star group by. So this is essentially the terms aggregation in Elasticsearch. And again, like I said, those are not going to guarantee exact results. And this is where Elasticsearch trades off performance for accuracy. It will get you better uh, performance in the expense of accuracy. Here, when I write those queries like this, this is exactly where I'm, I'm getting my uh, control over, do I want accuracy or do I want to, uh, sorry, do I want performance? Or do I want to spend more resources in order to get more accuracy? And that is one very important thing to note around those, uh, those things. So let's go back for the slides for a second. So dropping in Presto instead of just approaching um, Elasticsearch through the SQL API, if you have access to it, uh, will get you uh, the ability to run uh, things like Power BI and Tableau and all of ClickSense and all of those on top of your Elasticsearch cluster clusters. Um, but again, it will also allow you to decide whether or not you want an approximation or a, the actual numbers around whatever you, you're, you have there. Another thing that uh, this connector allows us to do, and again, thanks to the uh, federation feature that Presto offers, is the ability to put Elasticsearch as a fast, again, it trades off uh, uh, accuracy for performance. It gets you more performance because it will be uh, uh, less accurate maybe in some scenarios, but the entire premise of Elasticsearch has been a very fast data serving layer. So what if we can just create a view on, in Elasticsearch from your data warehouse. So if we, if we could just create a, 
some sort of an index that is a computation that we took from Elastic from, from the data warehouse from S3 and for example use the features that Elasticsearch and Kibana uh, get you out of the box and do it very well like, like the Kibana Maps application for example so if I had a, a petabyte scale data warehouse I could create indexes that are computed from data warehouse from that data warehouse uh, data uh, and create indexes then I, that, I, that I can just navigate in real uh, in real time and very interactively to drill down further and maybe even create more and more views as I uh, do this and it will be much more interactive than executing large scale uh, queries on top of that data. And another use case that is very useful for, for the Federation, I'll show you a couple of uh, interesting things around that in just a second, is uh, around the modeling that we use for Elasticsearch usually. So with Elasticsearch, the relational mindset is really a terrible idea to use. So if you come from, if you have a very strong background with SQL, uh, you would maybe try to use the data modeling that you use to do there, UML diagrams, 3NF, all of those, and apply that to Elasticsearch. And that would be a bad idea. Uh, it will get you to performance issues very, very, very fast. The better way to do things with Elasticsearch is do the normalization. Uh, there is support for parent child and nested document that doesn't really work well in, in at scale. So what we usually advise, and again, that really depends on your use case is to denormalize data. So for example, if you have a document that has um, data on a user and you need the username in that, we'll just tell you, well, just embed the username in the actual data, data entry. That it works well a lot of times, and especially if you need things to just uh, respond to queries very fast, but sometimes it doesn't make much sense. And actually doing this join would make sense. Um, and you would want to do this join in read time as opposed to doing that on write time, which is what the normalization uh, does. With Presto, you can do that. With Presto, and here is how it would look like in a very schematic manner, you can just query Elasticsearch, join on a table in your production database or a replica of your production database, and just bring up that uh, additional reference data on read time, reading from this uh, probably small reference table. This is something you cannot do with Elasticsearch. This is something you would need a compute engine uh, to be do to, to do for you. And this is it is what Presto can do very well. So select from Elasticsearch, join on MySQL uh, and the join condition, and then just every, the rest of the SQL statement is going to be completely standard. And that brings me to the uh, probably last interesting use case. Again, you don't want to use Elasticsearch with the traditional mindset. It will not work for you. But sometimes it does make sense to do that. So for example, whenever you just have two completely separate indexes com containing completely separate data, but you do need to join them for some use cases and denormalization or nested, nested documents or parent child are not going to hold, then Presto is actually useful for that. I'm not showing this as by saying you can do joins with Elasticsearch and this is the way to do it. I'm just saying in some places, and we're seeing thousands of use cases and clusters per year. So for some cases, not all of those thousands, just a couple of those, it does make sense to do joins with Elasticsearch and because you need Elasticsearch for full text search, you need Elasticsearch for this uh, low response times and, and, and all, but you cannot model your data in a different way. So joins would make sense for you to do. And that is exactly uh, what Presto can do for you. So with that, let's see how it would look like. So going back to uh, data grip and let me show you a couple of things. So um, one of the data sets that Elasticsearch has, the, the sample data sets, and if you don't know where I'm taking this from, uh, let me show you. So if you go, if you go to Kibana, 
um, on the home page of Kibana, you'll see there is add sample data. Going there, you'll see three uh, sample data sets. I just added all three, and the examples I'm showing you are based on that. So it's super easy. Uh, by the way, um, Prest also has a really nice UI. This is zoomed in, but essentially you can see all the queries that have been running, and you can see how many workers they have, and you can see stats, and it's real time, so it's, it's kind of nice. So going back to data grid for a second, uh, I want to show you how we can run those kind of queries and, uh, and do some interesting things with that. So one of the other data sets that we have is the Kibara sample data flights. So this is how it lo would look like in a uh, tabular format. And let's do some interesting things with it. Um, so for example, if I wanted to do, um, again, things like distinct and, and those kind of queries, I can just do that, of course. And again, the number you would see here would be different than the number that you would get uh, if you'd run the cardinality aggregation on, on this field, on this index. And, and I can show you that, but uh, I have more interesting things to show you. But this number will be different, and the reason for that is, again, because of this approximation. This is the actual real number that we are getting here. But what I wanted to show you is the ability to do joins between indexes and a couple of more interesting things. So if we'll just do select star from this index, you would see I have uh, uh, the destination airport name and a destination airport ID and destination uh, city name and destination country, but the country is just the country code. Uh, let's see how we can expand that. And for example, uh, in that example, this is denormalization because I have the destination airport ID, but then I also have the destination airport name and destination city name, and also the destination country. Those are what we call denormalization. We just put the reference data in the actual data. It does make sense. Again, th that is not going to change and the additional storage space is not that dramatic. Elasticsearch can do this well. But still, that is what we call denormalization. Let's have a look how we can do this in real time. So what I did, I, I went to, uh, to Kibana and I added, let me switch back to Kibana and let's have, let's go to, to DevTools. And in, in DevTools, you can see that I have, again, those Kibana sample data indexes. And I then I also created an airports index. Airports is essentially um, this index, like the definition that you see here. And it was essentially built uh, by uh, just adding, you know, airport name, code, code state. If I'm going to search on that, you will see how it looks like. So, um, the airport code, airport name, and what country it's in. And I actually created this using, so I created this index with this mapping and I actually created this using uh, SQL. So I just used this data set here. So insert into statements, a lot of those. We have that on, on our GitHub if you want it. And as you can see, we just added it and insert into actually worked, worked well for that. So. I have the airport code, I have the actual country it's in. Let's do, let's see how I can take this data. And you can see the flattened version of it. Select star from airports. So you can see this is how it would look like if uh, from, from SQL. And let's do a join between those two indexes. So if I'm going to run this query here, so I'm going to select from the flights index. I'm going to select the flight number, destination city name, and destination city country. Uh, sorry, destination country. And then just pull the airport name. Instead of taking it from flights, I'll take it from the airports table. And then also the country name, which doesn't ex currently exist on the flights table. Using this just simple join, if I run this, 
you'll see it just worked. And what happened here is essentially a query that took all the data from uh, one index and all the data from a second index after the filters and predicates and joined it together to get me the flight number, destination city name, destination country, airport name, and country name. Those two fields are taken from the airports table, which is a reference table, which is actually an index in Elasticsearch. And then again, those are from the original index. Now, those two fields I could have taken from anywhere else. I could have just joined them from MySQL, from Postgres, from pretty much anywhere. But just to show you how we, I, it, I can use a single statement, single SQL statement to join from two indexes in Elasticsearch or even to completely different data sources. And this is what we call query federation. And this is how we presto with the last search connector can be quite a game changer. Let me show you a couple of uh, another interesting thing that we can do. So I want to create a temporary view that is going to compute the uh, landing timestamp, which doesn't currently exist. So I have it pre-written. Um, and what you can see here that I'm going to use the memory connector. Memory connector is something in Presto that allows me to just write temporary tables. So if I'm going to run this, it will create a new table that is going to contain all of the fields from the uh, Kibana Sample Data Flights Index and also, in addition, two additional uh, fields that are going to compute uh, sorry, a, a, an additional field, this one single field, is going to compute a timestamp that is the landing. So if you look at the flight uh, index, you will see that we have a departure time and a duration, but we don't have the landing, and that is what I'm going to add now. And I always need to remove the, okay, the semicolon. So I've done that, and we can also query that to see how it looks like, and if I do select star from this, I'm going to see essentially the entire index like we've seen before, but with an additional column that marks the landing. So this is a temporary view, a computed view essentially, that has an additional column that's going to be uh, really interesting to work on. And now what this allows me to do is execute very, very complex queries like this one, which will get me all the flights per region, no, original flight, where the following flight is from the destination airport and in a range of three hours to one day. So I have to use the landing column that I just created and that is why I needed to do it, and now I can just do it. So we'll put those SQL for you, SQL statements for you to look at uh, uh, in, in the blog post following this video, but what you can see here is the endless possibilities of essentially computations and kind of MapReduce kind of computations that are not really possible to do uh, with Elasticsearch uh, out of the box as is. Okay, so, so coming back to, uh, to our slides over here. So I showed you federation in multiple ways, right? So I showed you how you can join different data sources with Elasticsearch. I can show you how you can join data with Elasticsearch. And we also discussed how we can do writes to Elasticsearch and essentially execute a very large computation on top of your big data. So data warehouse, Kafka, uh, what, what have you and put that into Elasticsearch um, in a computed way or even in a raw format just to allow you to use Kibana and other things that uh, Elasticsearch gets you out of the box, like full text search and geospatial uh, search and, and things like that. Um, which brings me to my last use, the last use case we are seeing and, and using this connector for. Uh, and it's what we call ETLs or data ingestion pipelines. Um, and and Presto, surprisingly so, it's not only used for querying um, very large data sources like HDFS and S3 uh, or uh, Federation joining different data sources. Because it has this ability to connect to so many data sources, surprisingly, it's also being used quite often as an ETL uh, 
process. So it allows you to take data from point X to point Y, maybe do some transformation on that. And one of the things we are often seeing is that people are using Presto to move data from Kafka or Kinesis or the you know uh, Pulsar and, and other uh, things that are there as event streams and pull the data into uh, HDFS and S3, but also to, uh, for example, Elasticsearch. So that is another use case that we're seeing often, and that is also uh, something that uh, we will sometimes use Presto for. It's just putting it out there, and now you, our connector does support writes to Elasticsearch. So you can use Presto to just move data from Kafka to, to Elasticsearch. So I put the the link to the original blog post that we had uh, around this connector. Um, you're very welcome to reach out to learn more. Uh, we'll be happy to uh, to show you what we can do for you on your own data sets. And I guess now is time for uh, for Q and A. So. You have the chat here. Uh, you can also ping us on Twitter or email uh, for for questions. Uh, best if you use the chat uh, and whatever questions uh, we have there, uh, I'll go and answer them now. All right, let me see if we have any questions. Uh, so just reminding you, um, you can ask questions on the YouTube uh, chat window over here or send them to us via Twitter, via uh, email even, and uh, I'll get to answering them. Uh, you can ask us about the, the topic of, of this AMA, so Presto and, uh, and Elasticsearch together, or just uh, questions about Presto or questions about Elasticsearch, I'm happy to take them. Um, we only got a single question at this point. Um, so if you have any, just uh, send them our way uh, now. So um, the question that we got is uh, about performance. Uh, how does it work? How does it scale? And that is a good and important question because when you do a, when you use Presto to compute on data coming from Elasticsearch, some of the data is going to be uh, some of the queries is actually going to be pushed down to Elasticsearch. So the actual execution will be based on the indexes and doc values, and essentially Elasticsearch will do the job and, and just transmit only the response or or par par parts of data, only partial uh, amount of data. Um, but sometimes the Presto is, will not be able to actually uh, figure out what uh, how, what to push down or there is no way for Presto to push down. So it will actually pull the entire data set uh, in question. So entire indexes sometimes <clears throat> into Presto and then compute on them. And, and in that case, it will really be depend. It, it, your Elasticsearch cluster will need to support that amount of data to that needs to be pulled, and also Presto needs to have enough compute to do that. So it's it's kind of um, a, a very uh, delicate uh, balance that needs to be done. But we know how to do that, and it's, uh, actually this is where our uh, connector shines. And it it works really much better than the open source one. Uh, if you've been trying to use that, uh, just because we know how to scan data more efficiently and and we know how to find that balance even uh, automatically on the query planning phase. Um, so it would really depend on the queries. Uh, the connector will do its best to push down um, things where need where, where where possible and therefore make the entire queries just faster. And sometimes uh, there will be no choice but to actually pull a lot of data. And, and that obviously, as you can imagine, uh, might take time. All right, uh, here's another question. Um, what is the best tuning performance practices ingestion in data read to Kafka and write data in Elasticsearch? Um, again, uh, yet another good question. Um, you, the best way to write data into Elasticsearch is using bulks. Um, so just write batches of data and not one record at a time. So I would say make sure that when you read data from Kafka, 
the data is read not in single values, but you can actually take a uh, large box of them from Kafka using Presto. Uh, there is a couple of ways to do that, but essentially you can um, you can try to force Presto to pull, pull data uh, in chunks by leveraging the offset parameter that uh, the uh, Kafka connector supports. And writing into Elasticsearch will just then be much faster. Uh, but again, this is also going to be executed in a distributed manner. So you'll be, uh, Presto essentially will be taking all of this data and try to push it to Elasticsearch. And in this case, the less threads or less workers is actually going to be better. But again, really depends on the amount of work and number of partitions that you have. And uh, we, we are actually, we're continuing our work on that. And this is one of the things that we are trying to optimize uh, right now in, in our version of the connector. But, but I, I hope I answered your question. Are there any more questions um, about this uh, Elasticsearch connector for Presto, about Elasticsearch, about Presto? And if not, uh, I'll tell you uh, good night or good day, wherever you are, and uh, I'll, we'll see you again next month. All right, so it seems like there are no further questions. Thank you for joining us today. Um, this, record, this video will be available as a recording. We'll also publish the entire uh, code or SQL statements and, and Elasticsearch mappings that we've used, so you can even try that yourself. Um, next month, by the end of this month, uh, in end, end of, uh, of February, we will have another Ask Me Anything session about uh, Kafka and Pulsar. Um, comparing the two, discussing which to use when. Um, hopefully you find this interesting and join us then. Thank you very much and uh, see you again.